Hepinize hoş geldiniz tekrar. Mina'nın beni davet edeceğini duyduğumda aklıma ikimizin de YGA'da olmasına vesile olan biri geldi. Ondan bahsetmemek olmazdı. Mina'nın babaannesi, benim anneannem. İsmi vicdan. İsmi gibi bize hep vicdanlı olmayı öğütleyen, dünyada asıl önemli olanın iyi bir insan e, olma, olduğunu öğreten kişi. 90 yaşında bugün. Arada soruyoruz, anneanne biz ne iş yapıyoruz diye kelimesi kelimesine tarif edemiyor bizim ne iş yaptığımızı. Ama onun öğütlediği yoldan gittiğimizi biliyor. Biz de aklında kalsın diye vicdanlı teknolojiler geliştiriyoruz diyoruz. Ve eminim ki çok mutlu oluyor. Mina Asi'den Asude'ye bir yolculuk dedi. Dediğim gibi detaylara girmediği için çok mutluyum. Şurada oturan annem dışında herhalde benim o dönemlerimi bilen yok. Neyse ki yok. Gerçekten hayata karşı bir isyan hali vardı. Asi isyandan geliyor. Asude de kelime anlamı olarak sakin demek. Ne oldu? Bende böyle bir değişim oldu diye düşününce e, Asi'den Asude'ye nasıl bir yolculuk? Aslında YGA'da ben biraz daha umutlu, cesur ruh halini geliştirdim. Çünkü herhalde elimizden bir şey gelmeyeceği düşüncesi beni dünya ile ilgili karamsar, öfkeli, asi yaparken Zaman içerisinde elimizden nelerin geldiğini görmek beni dünya ile ilgili daha cesur, daha umutlu yaptı. Bugün İngiltere'deki eğitim müfredatına TV'nin eğitim yaklaşımıyla yön verdiğimizi görüyorum. Ya da geçen sene bu sahnede konuşma yapan eğitim profesörü Gergraus'un her konuşmasında YGA'dan ilham aldığını ve çift kanatı kullandığını görüyorum. Global bütün konuşmalarında. Ve YGA'da hani son 13 yıldır bunun için kaynağımız yok ki bunu yapamayız dendiğini değil, bunun için nasıl kaynak yaratalım ki bunu hayata geçirelim dendiğini duydum. O yüzden ve zaman içerisinde bu hayallerin nasıl tek tek hayata geçtiğini gördüm. Bendeki e, özgüven bu şekilde arttı. O yüzden size de tavsiyem, dertlendiğiniz konular var, formları okuduk. Ve o dertlendiğiniz konularla ilgili imkanım olsaydı çözerdim demeyin. Çözmek için imkan yaratın, adım atın ve o attığınız adımların ne gibi sonuçlar, etkili sonuçlar doğuracağını görünce sizin de benim gibi umudunuz ve cesaretiniz artacak. Bence buraya gelmiş olmanız hayatınızda attığınız en güzel adımlardan bir tanesi. Bunu iddia ediyorum. Tekrar hoş geldiniz. Şimdi çok değerli iki ismi burada ağırlayacağım. Eğitimde nasıl bir dönüşüm yaratabileceğimizi, bunu nasıl mümkün kılabileceğimizi konuşacağız ve konuşmamıza İngilizce devam edeceğiz. Dileyenler e, kulaklıklarını takarak bizi izlemeye devam edebilirler. So, welcome again. Today we will talk about education and transformation in education. Education is such a subject and its problems are so deep rooted that neither a company nor a startup nor an NGO can achieve this alone. But in our conversation today we will see how an NGO, a startup and a company can succeed together. And we will connect the insights from three countries, Turkey, United Kingdom and United States. So we will be literally united today. And I'm so excited to host this meaningful panel and I will uh, briefly introduce my guests. Carl Ward is the CEO of City Learning Trust and Chair of Foundation for Education Development. He created an impact in education for the last 26 years. Most recently, he was selected as a fellow at the Center for Universal Education by Brookings Institute. And Chidam, Chidam Ertem is General Manager for Education at Intel. She is working closely with the partners worldwide to achieve digital transformation. Her passion is building skills for students to achieve their full potential. So now I would like to invite them to the stage. When the night so welcome again. So you brought your two sons, Carl, right? I have. And you, you, you even went to a football match. <laughs> we did football match, Galatasaray last night. Great game. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Who supports Galatasaray? Who supports Galatasaray? Huh. It's almost half. <laughs> <laughs> How was it? <laughs> uh, re really loud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loudest football stadium I've ever been to. Fantastic. Yeah. This is maybe the reason is Jihan from Adana. So the match between <laughs> Adana sport. <laughs> 
And to them, uh, welcome again. And we are so sorry. Um, and we heard about your loss. Uh, her father-in-law just passed away. And even during all the busy times, uh, she is here together with us. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I will start with you. Um, you are a great role model for us for, with your passion for transforming education, Carl. And before inviting you, I just said that there are some people who just worry and complain all the time, but while others, they take action, they generate solutions. And I'm curious about what motivated you, maybe in your childhood, to solve problems instead of complaining all the time? What was the Well, um, I think family and love always help you. Um, but you realize at some stage, and for me it was fairly early on, that if you're going to make a change in life and you want to make a change in life and you're passionate about something, you can't leave it for someone else to do. Mm -hmm. You've got to do it yourself. You've got to be the change. And I realized that that's what I had to do. So family and love and friendship and people who can back you are always hugely important. But if you're going to make the change that you want to in life, then don't just talk about it do something about it. And that's the thing that really drove me and continues to these days. Not just talk about it, but do something about it. Put ideas into action. And you can. Plenty of people want to support you when you feel like that. If the topic that you're interested in is that important, other people will follow you. I think these are also important for the uh, young generation here. Um, not just to listen and don't leave it to someone else to, to achieve. Yeah, and can I just say as well with that in mind, um, the young people in the audience, you can make a difference, a bigger difference than you realise, you really can. Don't be worried that you might just be 18, 19, 20. You can do what you want to do. You don't have to get to my age with grey hair <laughs> and, and just gone 50 to be able to do that. You can do that at a much younger age. Just have belief in yourself. You look great, by the way. And Chidam, uh, you are also, uh, I think, great role model for women as a woman in tech. And we like, admire your continuous efforts to, building, to build skills and to help young generation to achieve their potential. I will ask the same question to you. What was your, what was the source of your motivation? Yeah, so um, my main source of motivation was, um, I, I think I want to say that my mom, she is a role model. So uh, I can quickly explain it with two stories. The first one is um, my father passed away when I was, a, when I was an 11 and um, my sister was also four. So my mom raised us and she was working in Central Bank of Turkey in the accounting department, but she was not a university graduate at that time because she dropped when she married from the university. Uh, but uh, she was a very hardworking person. She always, she was very positive. She was helping us uh, to raise us. Sometimes she did two jobs, extra jobs, so that she can finance our education and so on. But she started to get a limit in, his, in her career because she wasn't a university graduate. And then she decided to get into a university exam and she, she managed to get into the university and finished university. And then she was able to uh, you know, go to higher levels. And her motivation, her passion, her optimism supporting us in that very difficult situation is always like a big role model for me. And, um, and also I thought that I need, to, uh, I need to get the best education that I can and I need to be able to do, uh, reach my full potential. So I always try to get the skills needed. You know, that really helped me. And also uh, that's an area of my passion so that if students can get skills uh, that they need, they are not going to be limited, you know, uh, like the glass ceilings or whatever we talk about. It's not limiting them. We need to help them to, to uh, find their full potential. 
And on another note, uh, as I mentioned, she was in central bank and she was in the accounting department <laughs> like Hakan. So she was, uh, like Hakan Arat mentioned, she was coming from uh, the job uh, and she was talking about she worked with the IT department. Those days it was the mainframes and uh, they were working on the payroll and all sorts of things, uh, long hours. And she was saying that the, those computers are like magic, you know, they create so much things and so on. And then she was describing the IT people like magicians <laughs> when I was in high school. And that also really motivated me. I said, I need to be the ma magician. <laughs> so that helped me to be the computer engineering just in the same university, Middle East Technical University Computer Engineering Department. Wow. You are creating magic in <laughs> education nowadays Thank and you. your sister is here as far as I know, yeah, right? My sister is here and also uh, my sister's son um, is also here. <laughs> so I think uh, we should hug your, uh, we should like um, say our greetings to your mom <laughs> and your role model. Yeah. So what, um, as far as I see what you have in common and what differentiates you from the others, you are aware of the problems in the world but you turn them into opportunities and you take action and work hard, very work hard, to, to solve them. And today we will talk about education in this conversation, of course, the reason that's why we are here, uh, education. Education as a word comes from educare in Latin and it means to draw out, to unleash potential. Mm -hmm. So true education is less about what you put into the student, but more about what you get out of them. But when we look at the education, it's almost the opposite. The, the um, system is out of touch and the curriculums are outdated and they don't inspire curiosity. I just want to ask, how do you describe the situation in the UK, uh, the education situation? I know it's a deep question, but we would like to hear your opinions. No, thank you. Well, the United Kingdom has got four education systems in one. It's really odd. There's England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland in a very small country. They're similar but not the same. And um, this week we saw the PISA League tables launched, which said that England is doing extremely well, even though there's a backdrop of the pandemic and a cost of living crisis. Um, and you would think that, that an education system that leads 160 countries' education systems across the world was in a great place. It's not. It's not at all. It's out of date and out of touch. Uh, the, the, the, the pandemic and the cost of living crisis has meant that um, school and college attendance is really low. Uh, recruitment and retention of teachers in schools across England, across the United Kingdom is really difficult. So with all that backdrop, uh, the UK is going through a tough period of time in its education system. And I suppose the message for you out there is that the difficulties, and I see this across the world when I speak in different places and go to different places, the difficulties that you're experiencing are no different than the difficulties that other countries are experiencing, that we've, we're experiencing in the UK across our education system. And so um, there is a time and a need for change, and that's my message to you young people out there. You can be the change that you want to be. Education is the place to do it. Nelson Mandela said education is the biggest thing that can change the world. Mm -hmm. And he was absolutely right. You can do that individually and you can do that collectively. You have the power to do that. And the UK is in that position at the moment where um, we are awaiting a big general election that will take place in the next year or so. It, education in the UK is, is very connected to politics and we're about to see probably a sea change in the way our education system is done and created. As an education company headquartered in the UK, we also feel the effects of this crisis every day and I believe that like British um, curriculum or British education system leads and other countries will follow. So I think it's a leadership responsibility uh, of the UK that we should think about it and take action. So we Abs are absolutely, and, and I just just say that we've seen 
um, the UK is a bit of an outlier uh, compared to the rest of the world. And, and uh, one might say that over the last 10 years, that's produced some pretty good results academically. But well-being isn't in a good place across student bodies in, uh, across the UK. And that's a real concern. We focus very heavily on knowledge-based education, less of a mix with skills. I foresee in the next year or so that changing. And when it comes to the States, I'm curious about the uh, situation over there because we hear that the teachers are underpaid and resignation rate is increasing. And I just heard that like, uh, the current state of teaching profession is at its lowest levels in 50 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, these are the facts that we hear. How do you describe the situation in the U.S.? Yes, definitely as someone coming from U.S., as you said, problems are everywhere, not just uh, in one country, but uh, I'm responsible for globally education uh, at Intel, and I, I mean, I'm love living in U.S., uh, and I see it. Teachers are really uh, struggling right now in terms of the workload, in terms of the salaries, and uh, we are see, uh, listening about teacher burnout, they are leaving the profession, and so on. It's, uh, it's all very true. But it's not only US. I mean, um, I was in Japan. Uh, Japan is a similar situation. Teachers are really uh, very busy, uh, overworking uh, also. So um, what we see is that they, are, they don't also have the skills. Uh, at least the technological skills uh, that they need to be able to be confidently talking to their students no nowadays because um, as you know er technology is everywhere and uh, teachers need to be able to use those technologies and um, also they are some if they are not confident troubleshooting takes a lot of time from them uh, instead of uh, really focusing on teaching, they are trying to do lots of tedious tasks and also technological tr uh, troubleshooting. So th this is a fact everywhere. And as you said, um, of course, underpaid situation is an important one. My son's school district just went to, to a strike. The teacher union went to a strike and it, there was 11 days of strike uh, in Portland school district because of that. Uh, because they are underpaid and they are overworking. So that's a very important example. But hopefully um, this will be seen as well because, as you said, it's the lowest levels and we all believe that education, uh, if the teachers, I mean, uh, Craig Barrett, who was one of our uh, CEOs, was saying that computers are, aren't magic, teachers are magic. Mm. If teachers know how to um, engage with the students, and especially give the right skills to the students, we know that you can um, help that curious minds to help themselves. So Intel is always focusing on teachers from that perspective. And in the past 20 years, we trained more than 15 million teachers all around the world. 15 million? 15 million. We spent more than $1 billion all around the world to train teachers on how to use technology. And nowadays we are teaching how to use technology to teach the right skills to the students. We will come to that topic. Yeah. We have role model teachers here. They will be uh, educated by our partnership with our content. And I'm glad that you are focusing on teachers. So people always tend to feel that their own country has the worst education system. So like we, we feel in that way. but. It's understandable, but it's clear that the education is in a major crisis all over the world. I think um, it's a fact, and I'm so glad that we are all gathered here to make a world better place, to change, to, to become a change. Um, at YGA, we say that to, instead of um, creating solutions that will save the day, we need to create solutions that will save the future. And I think you are a part of uh, one of kind, uh, one of these solutions that will change the future of uh, UK education. What's the reason for FED's Foundation for Education Development's existence for you? Really simple, actually. FED believes that each education system in the world should have a long-term plan for education. Because only through long-term planning can we unlock all that talent that exists out there in our ecosystem, all that talent that exists from each and every individual sitting in this room, and then double that up across each country. So what we're trying to do in the United Kingdom 
um, is create a long-term plan for education. One that can pass on to the next generations, as you say, just what's needed. Not one that, that, that every year or two might change and go in a slightly different direction. Because what you get in that situation is a lack of consistency. And you will know all from being in a school, in a college, in a university, what you need day in, day out is consistency. Then you can build up your education, build up your knowledge and skills, and become the person that you want to be with everything that you need to unlock all that talent. And you should not, wherever you live in the world, have an education system that doesn't support you to do that. Most people I speak to think England has a long-term plan for education. <laughs> It never has had. In fact, if I go back to 1945 and the end of the Second World War, the education system in England hasn't changed an awful lot. And we're nearly in 2024. That can't be right, and we need to do something about it. Yeah, um, and we are also a supporter of Foundation for uh, Education Development, and we are delighted to be part of that transformation because we also need that consistency to build skills to uh, create, a, create an impact in STEM for sustainability education. You said something really important just a few moments ago. Every education system thinks it's not very good. Yeah. There are some really good examples of great education out there. I have no doubt that each and every one of you in this room would find lots of examples in that in your experiences. But it can be much, much better if we do things slightly differently. And that's what we need to focus on. Yeah. Maybe we can ask to the audience, uh, because they are all high school and university students, how many of you are satisfied with your education? Maybe I should ask the opposite, <laughs> not satisfied <laughs> to, to see the hands because we, but as I said, like we have problems, but there are problems uh, in everywhere and we are here to, to make a change. And Chidem is running programs at Intel uh, called Skills for Innovation. And I think the topic is so important for YGA volunteers as well because they are creating innovations, uh, innovations for good, tech for good. and. I'm sure that they will listen with all ears. In your opinion, what are the most essential skills for innovation? Great, thank you. Thanks for asking this, this question because this is my passion point. So um, first I want to start with the, the new world we are in, you know. Uh, with fourth industrial revolution, now you are hearing AI and so on. Our world is changing. We are at a tipping point. And um, 10 years ago, we were talking about that fourth industrial revolution, but it's accelerating and it's really changing how the people live, how the people work and so on. So having the right skills is very important. As computers get faster, as AI gets better and better, uh, as people start learning how to use AI, we, we will see that this acceleration will go much faster. Um, if we go to the slide, I have just a few slides to show you. I'll click, yeah, this one. So, uh, is it a threat or an opportunity? Let's look from that perspective. If you have the right skills, this is, a, this is definitely an opportunity. But if you don't have the right skills, it's a threat. But in the meantime, if you look at these statistics, World Economic Forum, uh, has uh, always does surveys with the big employers. And uh, according to their latest survey, um, 83 million jobs will be declining in the next four or five years until 2027, and 69 new jobs will be emerging. So it looks like there is an imbalance. Unfortunately, some of the jobs will be uh, disappearing, but some new jobs uh, will come. And automation will impact, of course. But in the meantime, uh, as with every industrial revolution, there is big shifts and new jobs are created. So that's why we, we wanted to understand which skills are needed so that students can be innovators of tomorrow and innovators of these new jobs. There is no, not, it's not possible to fully forecast or guess which jobs will be there in the next five years, even 10 years, 
because it's rapidly changing right now. But if we can give the right skills to the students, they can definitely survive in that and then bring the right, uh, they can be creators or innovators of their jobs. From that perspective, um, again, if you look at the uh, World Economic Forum statistics, so uh, the, the top 10 jobs that are declining are more clerical jobs, as you can imagine, because AI and automation will take care of them. But the, the jobs that are going to be really um, uh, kind of raising, rising, or the need for those jobs, if you look at them, as you can see, mostly sustainability, AI, machine learning, technical skills are really needed. But in the meantime, uh, the employers, when you ask employers, this third row, uh, the third column, sorry, is very important. If you ask the employers w what they are looking for uh, from their um, the workers um, or employees, they, there is a lot of soft skills also needed. It's not just the technological skills, but uh, ability to problem solve, uh, like the double-winged example uh, of YGA, understanding of ethical issues and then um, design thinking and so on, those are really important. With those in mind, we created a program called Skills for Innovation. We wanted to give the uh, uh, students the skills so that they can be innovators of tomorrow, but we wanted to approach from a holistic view, not just from the technology angle. So we decided on working with, of course, consultants, World Economic Forum, uh, NGOs. We believe in public-private partnerships. Uh, working with all of them, we identified seven skill sets and mindsets. It starts with social-emotional learning, because it's the base. And then it goes to computational thinking, design thinking. These are really critical uh, mindsets. And then it goes to data science, simulation and modeling, AI machine learning, and uh, coding and programming, of course. So these skills will help students be to be, uh, again, resilient, have the right social and soft skills, but also the technological skills. With that in mind, we created teacher professional development, because as we talked about it, if teachers cannot use this and give these examples, they cannot uh, also teach. So we, our aim is teachers to use technologies in everyday teaching and learning, not just in a coding course, more like a math class, a language art class, and so on. And also we created starter packs, which we will be working together with Twin uh, here. Uh, now Twin is uh, providing starter packs. We are partnering with software companies and companies like Twin to create starter packs so that students can experience this and teachers can confidently use this as the ready-made lessons. So that's the idea of Skills for Innovation. And we are so glad that we help um, and we get support from your team to create STEM for sustainability starter packs. Digital skills are also important, like uh, maybe in addition to your seven skills. And I think we are getting out of time. We have just one minute and I'm going to ask the same question to both of you. Why you support YGA? Why you support Twin Science? And why do you think that our participation was important for your organizations? A really quick one from me. I think climate change is one of the biggest issues that you as a generation will have to deal with beyond me. Uh, and anything we can do to work with an organization that's so fixed on finding solutions for that is the most important thing. Uh, keep working hard, dreaming big, uh, and never give up. From my side, um, I was uh, in YGA stage in 2010. Ten. Yeah, this is not the first time. Before going to US, I was in, uh, in Turkey, of course, and managing Turkey and uh, regional countries at Intel. So from that time on, I, I have, YGA is a great example for me uh, that we need to do, again, work together. The passion of helping the youth is a very important one. So we really like to partner with YGA. But in case of this, with the twin science, Again, the visions are so uh, complementary. Wow. We really like to engage and uh, work with those type of companies that uh, help our 
skills for innovation. We cannot do it alone. You know, we need to work together with companies and grow this uh, vision and bring it to action. So that's why Twin is a great partner for us. Now we are adding starter packs with Twin and we can use it in the earthquake region now, um, of course, helping the use. teachers. Yeah, we, will, we are using it, yeah. So that's a great, um, I think, collaboration for me. So, yeah. And by the way, they are going to be used globally. I mean, we are not just doing it for Turkey, but the, our collaboration with Twin, the starter packs will be used globally. The starter packs now are using in the uh, like used by teachers in the earthquake quick zones, and as well as they are distributed to four forty thousand teachers all around the world. So the the uh, latest technology, latest content in both in the earthquake zones and in the teachers all around the world. Yeah. Um, the, the, my last sentence is, the current education system cannot prepare children for the future, uh, but forward-thinking institutions such as Foundation for Education Development, such as Intel Education, you generate content, you build skills, you help lots of teachers and students all around the world, and we are glad to be part of these uh, organizations. And thank you for your time, and thank you for your participation to YGSM. Thank you.